Hello, I'm Brandon Bonner for On Focus, and today we are in Wisconsin Rapids. An exciting delivery is going to take place on February 14th here at Aspire's Hospital. I am with Maggie, the director of Family Birthplace. Maggie, tell me a little bit about this delivery. What's happening on February 14th? Yes, yeah, so it's very exciting. On February 14th, um, we have built a brand new birthing suite up here. We have eight, we call them LDRP rooms, and so that you lay your delivery, recover, and stay there until you go home. Um, and then we also have two evaluation rooms and ensuite cesarean section room as well. And we're going to get a look at those suites in these rooms here, but let's first talk about why. Why did Aspirus make this investment and when did the planning start? Well, the planning started about three years ago, and um, we really wanted to invest in our communities and make sure that our um, community know that we are putting them first and putting little um, investments into their comforts and making sure that their stay is not only safe and the top of the state of the art, but also kind of home for them. Can you talk about community, talk about investments, and in three years into planning, I have to imagine that you guys got a lot of people involved in this. Did you reach out to past patients, community members? What kind of ideas came into planning this facility? So yes, uh, at all of the above, we reached out to uh, past patients, we reached out to future patients, we uh, reached out to all community members, we asked the staff what they thought um, the unit should look like, and providers as well, we got input from every angle that we could think of. Now, Aspire's Hospital is a part of, here in Wisconsin Rapids, is part of a larger organization. Where else do you have hospitals and clinics here in West Central Wisconsin? We have them all over. So, Aspire's is a very big system, and we actually have um, some in Michigan as well. Uh, but we have clinics in Wisconsin Rapids, Nakusa, the Lakes, and Pineville area, so. and Adams as well. Most recently added Adams. Well, that is exciting. Maggie's going to give us a tour of the suite here and we're going to show you what this all has to offer. So if you're expecting or thinking about expecting, you might want to consider Aspire's Hospital for your next delivery. So we are now inside the family birthplace and we are outside one of the evaluation rooms. Maggie, obviously mothers to be expecting sometimes don't know all the first steps and signs. Why is it important to have an evaluation room inside your birthplace? Well, it's very important because even if it's not your first time, every pregnancy is very different. And you don't always know when you're actually in labor or you, maybe your water broke, but you're not too sure. So it's important to have rooms that we can check the moms out and reassure them or say, yes, you indeed are having a baby today and move them to a delivery room. So looking at this room here in front of us, what is unique about this room? What kind of ideas and thoughts went into the planning for this design? So we really thought about everything a mom could possibly be coming in with and making sure that this room, we could evaluate her completely without having to move her. Um, so it's big enough. If we need uh, ultrasound to come up and uh, do an ultrasound of the mom, then they can fit their equipment in here. And um, the bed is made, so if the doctor needs to do an exam on the mom internally, the, the doctor can do that as well. Sounds good, Maggie. We're going to take a look at some of the conference space here because not only do they offer a center for giving birth, but they also provide education here. We are now inside the conference room here, and the birth center staff is here to help you. And one of the things that they have here at the conference room is opportunities to learn about giving birth. Tell us a bit about some of the programs and classes that you guys have here at Aspirus. So we do offer a couple of classes here, and we know that everyone's time is very limited. And uh, so our first class is um, understanding d uh, delivery, and um, it goes through breathing and relaxation techniques. We know that everyone uh, learns differently, and everything works differently for you, depending on uh, the bone and pain you're going through. So, um, And then the second class is called... Um, uh, breastfeeding and how to take care of the baby. So um, goes to, you know, car seats and bathing the baby and all kinds of fun things. And you see that we're sitting on these, we call them labor balls, but they truly are exercise balls. So um, you get to um, practice with these um, during your first class and um, learn different positions while you're in labor that might help you be a little more comfortable while you're going through contractions. 
I know that each and every one of you are waiting and excited to see the suites. So we're going to head over and take a look at the suites and tell you what they have to offer. So Maggie, as we're beginning to walk into the birth suite now, what does mom and family really expect and what do you show them when they first arrive? When the family first arrives, we would escort them into their room and we would point out the family area. Um, it has um, one of a kind, specially made for us, uh, sleeper sofas, they're queen sized um, for the support person to sleep in and they have their own refrigerator in the rooms, many fridges, so they can bring their um, anything they like from home and, and store in there as well. And they have their own large closet to put all of their clothes in and the baby's car seat. Then um, we would help the mom um, change into her gown and we would explain the call light to them and how the bed works for them too. So in the room here, I see not only the mini fridge that you discussed, but there's also two flat screen TVs. What are some of the other comforts and securities that you find inside the suite? Mm -hmm. So um, inside the suite, uh, we have a wonderful glider recliner that sits by the mom's labor bed, and it actually will lay flat. So if somebody wants to take a little nap there, they can. It is great for um, breastfeeding afterwards and holding the baby afterwards. And um, it has a little pull-out stool underneath. So for moms who are shorter like me, um, they have a nice place to rest their feet too. So we have to remember, we are in a medical facility, mm -hmm. but it looks like we're in a hotel room. A lot of the pictures and images throughout the room really kind of give you a sense of comfort. Mm -hmm. But seeing that we are in a medical facility, what thoughts and planning went into the suite per se? Yeah, so we definitely wanted to make sure that we had all the safety and um, medical equipment that we needed to take care of the family, but we also wanted to make sure it still looked homey. So um, behind the mom's bed, you'll see two pictures, um, kind of they're floral, and they're hiding the medical gases, actually. So when we do need to use them, we just push the pictures up and then um, we can get to the oxygen very quickly for either mom or baby and um, use it. And then when we're done using the uh, medical gases, then we just pull the pictures back down and it looks all nice and homey again. I am sure there's lots of mothers that are going to be excited to get in this room. And I have to imagine other family members are going to be excited to see the new little ones that are coming into the world. What type of facilities, visitation times do you guys have available for families? Um, so the support person can come anytime. They're welcome 24-7. And um, we will give them a key, actually, that will let them come into the unit anytime they want. Um, they do have to return that on discharge, of course. Um, and then for everyone else, it's at 10 in the morning until 8 o'clock at night. And, of course, you know, being very respectful of the mom and um, support person and making sure that they're getting the sleep that they need, too. And as someone that's visiting the hospital here, obviously we're especially in a time that there's a lot of flu and illness going around. What should individuals keep in mind when they come to the hospital? Any time of the year, really, if you're sick, you know, please don't come and visit this new baby. Um, they can get sick very easily, and they can't get vaccinated to a lot of different things like the flu right away. So it's really important that if you're sick, you're very respectful of this new family member and the rest of the family and, and not share those illnesses with them. And those families have a lounge mm -hmm. and they also have some snacks available to them as well. Tell us a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. So we actually have uh, two lounges. One is on the unit and one um, sits outside the unit. Both of them have vending machines and um, they are welcome to use their computers and laptops and phones, anything that they want uh, while they're here in those lounges and while they're maybe waiting for mom while she's dozing or you know maybe taking a nice whirlpool tub. So Maggie, as we're making our way around the room, we come across the bathroom. It looks more like a spa. Tell me some of the features that are in this restroom. Yes. Um, so we know that, you know, moms go through a lot giving labor and delivery, and uh, we wanted to make sure that they were pampered a little bit. So uh, we do have a very nice walk-in shower for them, and then we have a whirlpool tub as well. And we have a backlit mirror for the moms who want to maybe put their makeup on right away afterwards too. So we brought out the mini fridge. Some of these births can become pretty extensive. What other comforts do you guys provide your patients? 
So for um, the families, we actually offer room service, which means that they can call down uh, during certain hours, of course, and order food when they're hungry. And the support person can do that as well. What about anything for the special moment or after the special moment when they enter in their new ones? And I say new ones because sometimes we do have twins. Yep, cer- certainly could be twins. And um, after they deliver, they do have a choice between a celebration meal or a celebration basket. Um, so the celebration basket has all types of different little goodies in it that they get to take home. Uh, the celebration meal can be a breakfast, lunch, or supper. So after that meal or that welcome basket, does the family move out of this room or they stay here throughout the entire stay at this virus hospital? They actually get to stay in this same room their entire stay. So it's um, really quite nice for them. Well, Maggie, we've talked a lot about the birth center here. We've talked about some of the educational services that you provide. What other services are those that are that are expecting should expect? We do have two lactation consultants on the unit, and they are staff nurses as well. So um, sometimes moms will get a visit from them during their stay and assist it with breastfeeding. And then after they are discharged, we will set them up with a free appointment with the lactation consultants as well. So Aspirus has made a pretty significant investment in Wisconsin Rapids. Are you looking or are you in the process of recruiting for additional RNs or staff here? Well, currently we are full staffed, um, but you never know when somebody retires or, you know, if we get more moms delivering here, we may need to look to hire more nurses. Sounds great, Maggie. Thank you for the opportunity to come here and look at this facility. I know there's a lot of people at home that are watching now. Go ahead, check out the link above to get a little bit more information about the new birth center here at Aspirus Hospital in Wisconsin Rapids. I'm Brandon Bonifant on Focus, and we'll, guys, we'll see you guys in the next video.